Hey, welcome again to the Jay Nicholas, as usual. We're gonna tie a winter steelhead fly on a tube. Uh, this is a fly I was tying on a shank before, but I've decided to, to run it on a tube. This is a Pro Sport Fisher Classic tube in medium size, and it's kind of a translucent fluorescent orange. I'm going to use a, uh, let me tell you, this is a very, very effective fly. I'm going to use a Vivas ADOT thread. You could certainly use your thread of choice. I just wind a little bit on there and then put a little bit of uh, penetrator cement. Super glue works great. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put on a, a tail. Now this fly is a version, it's kind of a cross between a polar shrimp and a boss. These are both old time traditional flies that are very, they've been effective for 70 years fishing for winter steelhead. Guess what, they still work. So I'm going to make this tail fairly long. Get my thread back. And it, I'm leaving a little bit over a quarter of an inch of tube. This fly is going to be rigged with a, um, with a trailer hook uh, tied on a loop. And the knot will be sucked into this tube. So there's my tail. Now I'm going to put on a dubbed body of uh, Senyo's Fusion Dub. This is Eat a Peach. Greg, buddy, he came up with some great names, great marketing talent. Um, Greg's an awesome guy, very creative very fishy. Uh, he was kind enough to write a Ford in my one of my intruder books. Now how long do you make? You can make this body as long or as short as you care to. Now sometimes when I'm winding, when I'm tying off my uh, dubbing loop, I'll just make one turn over it. Sometimes when I'm getting fancy, I'll go around that thread several times and then tie it off. You can make this, you can extend this body up to about here also. You could just do, a, you could make it half the size. This is just kind of a medium. And do I have a brush handy? Of course I don't. This is a pretty fuzzy body already. I'll just fuzz it up a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of uh, pour chenille to add some flash to it. I'm actually going to tie this in uh, and wrap it like a hackle. I'm going to use about three turns. Nothing magic about that. Use one turn, two turns. And this is the copper UV? Yes, yes, Guy. This is, uh, this is copper UV. And I, I've mentioned this at other times. I'll mention it again. You know, if, if, if you get copper UV polar chenille and get used to using it and then you think, hey, hey I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try another color. I'm going to get purple or I'm going to get black. Uh, you'll think, man, it's not even the same material because instead of being straight fibers like this, they'll be all kinky and knurled up. That's because the, 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 the far... Fi fibers, uh, when they dye it, um, 
they have to heat it and it it curls mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I particular I particularly like the straight stuff um, now I'm gonna put in my wing and this is uh, this is uh, pro sport fisher marble fox Can you use Arctic Fox? Sure, sure you can. Now, um, it, it's always a challenge to figure out how much material, how much bulk. If you have too much, it's, it makes a big, thick wad where you tie it in. Um, I, li I like my wings to be fairly full. And you see there's a lot of, uh, I'm gonna pull out a few of these guard hairs. You don't have to pull out any but I'm pulling out the ones that aren't um, quite in the in the right curve. Now I'd like my wing, I'd like the tips of the of this wing to go back equal to or just a tiny bit past the tail. So I'm good right there. I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna trim off the butts. Some people will tie this wing in before they trim. I'm, I'm, my thread's really loose here. I'm just barely holding it in place with my index finger. Now I'm tightening down. Try to keep that on top of the tube because you don't want it spinning around. Now, um, this Marble Fox, Arctic Fox, and this is a kind of a, this is a creamish color. You could use a stark white. I have a preference for the cream. Now I'm gonna use a uh, tie in a Schlappen hackle. You notice this, I've got no weight so far, I'll put this up here. Tie in my schlappen by the tip. No weight on this fly. I'll fish this on a, a moderate tip, say a T11 tip. Um, T10, T11. Uh, if you fish an OPS T tip, it's uh, the five to six inch, you know, no, the, the different manufacturers, they like to drive us crazy. Um, why can't we all have T10 or T11? But no, we've got to have one manufacturer has T10 and the other has T11 and then another one doesn't even talk about T's. They just talked about five to six inches per second. Well, that's the way it goes. They're all good. Anyway, I'll, I'll, use, I'll fish this fly on a moderate tip. Um, I'm gonna add a cone to this now. This color combination of kind of a, a black, contrasting black tail, white wing, hot orange, it's a color combination that has worked, you know, more than 70 years, back to the 1950s, or yeah, 1950s. I wasn't fishing them then. I, I fished them in the, when? In the, yeah, late 60s back in the good old days. A little bit of cement here. I'm using a penetrator. Super glue is great. Uh, there's all kinds of cements that work well. Now I'm gonna put on a, um, an ultrasonic disc. I'll show you what it looks like here. I hope you can see that all right. Um, Bruce Berry tells me that th this, uh, these discs don't really emit fish attracting vibrations. 
I think he's wrong, even though he's the rep for pro sport fishing. I think I know better than Bruce does because I can almost hear the steelhead being attracted. You know, one of the worst things you can do is forget yourself and try to cut a tube when it's on the when it's on the metal mandrel. I've done that. Your scissors do not like that at all. I'm gonna touch my lighter to that, and I'm, that that hole is kind of open, but I'm gonna make sure it's open. So when my fingers are cold and I'm on the river, not having any trouble. Now look at that beautiful fly. So now I'm, uh, bear with me. It's gonna be out of the, out of view for a little bit. I've got a, uh, an upturned eye octopus hook here, uh, tied on with a double surgeon's loop. I'm going to run this through the back of the tube, pull it up here, and of course I'm having fun, I'm trying to keep this in view. I'm going to pull this into that tube, and now I want this fly to ride hook down, and so I'm going to have to turn it like there we go. So this is how this fly is going to fish. Um, I want to turn it just a little bit more. This is a little bit aggravating. There we go. But it can be done. It can be done. So we have a classic style tied on a tube with a stinger hook right there in the back. Nice, sharp, small hook. Um, there you go. I hope, hope you've enjoyed this. And, and as you can tell, you know, I'm, I'm holding this. I haven't quite got my hook. When I say I want, it, I want this hook to be straight down, I'm going to have to wrestle with this a little bit, but I won't bore you with my wrestling match. Um, it's a great fly, great color combination. I hope you have fun tying and fishing them. Thank you. Mm -hmm.